5 Demonic Things You Need to Get Out of Your House Now In today's world, many people unknowingly allow dark spiritual influences into their homes through everyday items, music, and entertainment. These objects, while seemingly harmless, can open doors to demonic forces and disrupt the peace and protection God intends for us. The enemy uses subtle means to infiltrate our lives, and it takes spiritual discernment to recognize these hidden dangers and remove them from our homes. In this video, we will discuss five common items that could be inviting demonic presence and explain why it's crucial to eliminate them. By cleansing your home of these objects, you're not only protecting yourself and your family from spiritual attacks, but also inviting God's presence to dwell with you, bringing peace, safety, and abundant blessings. Join us as we explore the dangers of witchcraft objects, good luck charms, satanic books, symbols of foreign gods, and demonic entertainment, and learn how to safeguard your home against these spiritual threats. If you find this content helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on spiritual growth. Don't forget to leave a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and share this video with friends and family to help them keep their homes free from spiritual dangers. Let's spread the light together. 1. Witchcraft Objects the first demonic item you need to remove from your house are objects associated with witchcraft. Many Christians, unknowingly, have items in their homes that seem to be merely decorative or aesthetic objects, but in reality serve as demonic gateways and symbols of association with witchcraft. The devil is cunning and frequently uses these objects to subtly infiltrate people's homes, creating openings for his influence. These objects often come disguised as cultural, fashion, or artistic elements. For example, some crystals and gemstones, which many use for decoration, are actually associated with spiritual healing practices or mystical energies. Despite seeming harmless, these objects carry occult symbolism that can allow demonic forces to enter your home. Similarly, candles and incense, when used outside of a Christian context, are often employed in witchcraft rituals or spiritual invocations. In addition to these, more obvious items like wands, Ouija boards, tarot cards, and magic mirrors are known for their use in occult practices and should be absolutely avoided. These objects not only represent an immediate spiritual danger, but they can also act like a magnet, attracting demonic entities into your home. Having these items in your house, even without the conscious intention of using them for spiritual practices, can be seen as a form of authorization for evil forces to invade the space that should be dedicated to God. The Bible is very clear about the stance God's children should take regarding these practices. In Deuteronomy 18 verse 10, it is written, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens. In his wisdom, God forbids any involvement with witchcraft and associated practices because he knows the dangers these activities represent, not only for our spiritual lives, but also for the peace and harmony of our homes. As followers of Christ, we are called to detest what he detests and protect our lives and families from any form of evil. Many symbols that appear to be merely artistic or historical also carry dangerous spiritual connotations. For example, the pentagram and hexagram, which are often used as accessories or patterns in clothing and jewelry, are directly linked to occultism and witchcraft. The inverted cross of St. Peter, frequently used as a visual provocation or in rebellious contexts, is actually a symbol associated with Satanism. These symbols, even when used without malice, have the potential to attract evil forces because the spiritual realm responds to these images and signs. Therefore, it is essential for every Christian to carefully evaluate their home and the objects they possess. Any item linked to witchcraft, magic, or occult practices should be removed and, if possible, destroyed to ensure that your home remains a place of peace and protection. In addition to removing these items, it is important to consecrate your home to God, asking Him to purify the environment and protect it from any evil influence that may have entered through these objects. If you have these objects, even if you haven't used them with the intention of practicing witchcraft, it's time to get rid of them. Trust in the Lord to protect you and take care of you and your family. 
The Word of God assures us that when we turn away from evil and faithfully follow His commandments, He will be with us, as it is written in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Remove these objects and trust that the Lord will bring you peace, safety, and abundant blessings. 2. Good Luck Charms The second demonic item you need to remove from your house are good luck charms. Although many consider them harmless or even a form of protection, these objects have deep roots in superstitions and spiritual practices that do not honor God. The belief that a charm can attract positive energy, ward off evil spirits, or bring success is a spiritual distortion. These promises do not come from God, but are lies created by the devil to divert people from true faith and trust in the Lord. Good luck charms are common in many cultures and traditions, seen as symbols of protection or good fortune. They can be hung on doors, worn as jewelry, or placed in strategic areas of the home. However, behind these seemingly innocent practices lies a spiritual trap. Using charms implies that you believe material objects can influence your destiny, challenging God's sovereignty over your life. In Exodus 20 verse 4, God clearly warns us, You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. This includes any type of object to which you attribute spiritual power. When you place your trust in charms, you are relinquishing full trust in God. This not only affects your relationship with Him, but also opens doors to idolatry and negative spiritual influences. Using a charm for protection or luck is essentially idolatry, placing the object as an intermediary between you and God, something He clearly condemns. The spiritual trap of charms is subtle but powerful. What seems like a gesture of protection or luck can, in fact, be an entry point for demonic influences in your life. The devil exploits our vulnerability, especially in moments of uncertainty or fear, offering quick and deceptive solutions. A charm may seem like a simple way to ward off evil or ensure success, but in reality, it is leading you away from the path of faith causing you to believe that your security or prosperity depends on something other than God. The Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 that we must walk by faith, not by sight. When we hold on to charms, we are walking by sight, placing our trust in something we can see and touch, instead of fully trusting in the Lord. The use of charms also feeds superstition, a practice that contradicts faith in God's power and provision. Superstition is born out of fear and insecurity, emotions that the devil uses to ensnare us in his web of lies. Moreover, many charms have origins in occult and pagan practices, which further increases the spiritual risk. Behind every charm is the false promise that it can control or manipulate spiritual forces for personal benefit, which is a form of rebellion against God. God is the only one who can truly protect and bless us, and any attempt to seek that protection or success in material objects is an affront to his sovereignty. Good luck charms such as bracelets, necklaces, or objects hung on doors or windows may seem harmless, but they are symbols of a distorted faith. Using them means you are not placing your complete trust in God. Jesus taught us that our trust should be in the Lord alone, as we read in Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Instead of trusting in charms, place your faith in God's provision and protection. He is the only one with the power to guard your life, your home, and your family from all evil. Using charms is a way of trying to serve two masters, something Jesus warned we cannot do. Matthew 6 verse 24 teaches us, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. If you have charms in your house, it's time to remove them and fully trust in God. Get rid of these objects and ask God to purify your house and restore your faith in Him. Trust in the promise of Psalm 91 verses 1 to 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. 3. 
Satanic books. Another extremely dangerous item you need to remove from your house are satanic books. With the advancement of technology and civilization, the devil has utilized these means to spread darkness in a more subtle and efficient way, especially through widely available literary materials. Books that deal with witchcraft, black magic, and occultism carry a strong demonic influence that not only invades the reader's mind, but can also open spiritual doors to the realm of darkness within your home. Literature has immense power to shape our thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes, and the devil is fully aware of this. In the past, witchcraft, sorcery, and occult practices were restricted to closed circles and secret rituals. However, with the passage of time, these practices have been compiled and made available in books, making occult knowledge accessible to anyone who seeks it. The danger of these books lies not only in the words they contain, but in the spiritual doors they open for involvement with the occult and demonic practices. Satanic, occult, and magic books act as tools to indoctrinate and attract readers into the realm of darkness. Many may think that reading these books out of curiosity or for research is harmless, but the simple act of absorbing this kind of content can be enough to attract negative spiritual influences. Words hold power, and when we read these materials, we expose ourselves to the demonic deceptions they promote. The biblical warning in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 is clear. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. These books are not merely printed material. They are channels through which the devil works to seduce, deceive, and drag people away from faith, leading them to believe lies and practices that contradict the Word of God. Examples of these books include titles such as The Key of Solomon, The Book of Shadows, The Goetia, and The Book of Lies. These are known for promoting witchcraft, demonic invocations, and occult rituals. For those who have read or possessed these books at home, even if they have stopped reading them, it is extremely important to get rid of them because the mere presence of these materials can continue attracting demonic influences. Many have reported terrifying experiences after reading or applying the teachings in these books. There are cases of people who, after engaging with these materials, began to suffer from spiritual oppression, psychological disturbances, and a constant sense of darkness around them. These experiences are clear signs that these books are connected to evil forces, and their influence does not stop when the book is closed. By keeping these materials, even unintentionally, you are maintaining open doors for evil to enter your life. Moreover, the very fact of owning these books can be seen as a form of spiritual consent. When the devil sees that a person keeps something in their possession that is dedicated to the forces of darkness, he uses that as permission to act in their life. These materials are essentially properties of the kingdom of darkness, and by keeping them in your home, you are giving space for the prince of this world, Satan, to have access to your household. For those who sought answers in occult or magic books in moments of desperation, such as seeking healing, knowledge, or quick solutions, it is important to recognize that these paths do not lead to light. They may offer temporary relief, but always at the cost of lasting peace and true fulfillment in God. Only the Lord is the source of all true power and lasting solutions. As followers of Christ, we are called to abandon every form of evil and turn away from anything that could draw us away from God. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 22, the Word of God instructs us to abstain from every form of evil. This means that we should not have, in our homes or our lives, anything that could open doors to negative influences. Books of magic, witchcraft, and occultism are more than just printed texts. They are direct channels for the spread of demonic doctrines. What should we do then? Instead of feeding our minds with these false doctrines, we should follow the example given to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The only book that should dwell in our hearts and minds is the Word of God. The Bible is our source of truth, wisdom, and light. Therefore, if you have satanic, witchcraft, or occult books in your home, do not keep them any longer. 
Get rid of them immediately and seek to purify your home. Fill your mind with the truth of God and fill your house with the word and the presence of the Lord. God is faithful to bring deliverance and protection to all who seek refuge and direction in Him. 4. Symbols and Images of Foreign Gods God was very clear in His instruction regarding the worship of other gods. And this includes the removal of any symbol or image that represents foreign deities or false gods. The Bible teaches us that the Lord is the only true God, and any attempt to worship or revere another figure, deity, or entity is a form of idolatry that directly contradicts God's commandments. In Exodus 20 verses 3 to 5, God warns, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. This command is direct and non-negotiable. We are not to worship images, statues, or symbols that represent other gods or spiritual beings. This includes not only figures clearly associated with pagan religions, but also symbols and images that, unknowingly, may be linked to beliefs or spiritual practices contrary to the Christian faith. Examples of images and statues that should be removed include figures like Buddha, Shiva, Krishna, Zeus, and other mythological gods. These figures, often seen as harmless or merely decorative, carry dangerous spiritual symbolism. Many people claim that these statues have protected them from disasters, brought them luck, or even success in their lives. But these are tools of the devil. He uses these images to deceive and trap people in a cycle of idolatry and spiritual dependence that pulls them away from God. By placing faith in these objects, People are inadvertently putting their trust in forces that do not come from the Lord but from darkness. Idolatry is not just about worshiping false gods. It is also about trusting in something or someone other than God for protection, safety, or prosperity. When you place a statue or image in your home with the intention that it will bring peace, harmony, or success, you are attributing to that object a spiritual power that, in reality, belongs only to the Lord. This is idolatry, and throughout the Bible, God repeatedly condemns this practice, calling His people to repentance and spiritual purity. In addition to statues of pagan gods, images of mythical creatures such as dragons, phoenixes, or other beings with spiritual connotations can be dangerous. These symbols are often used in ancient and modern cultures to represent power, protection, or immortality but they are rooted in occult beliefs and practices. For example, in many Eastern cultures, the dragon is a symbol of spiritual power, and its use may unintentionally attract spiritual influences that are contrary to Christianity. Another important point is the reverence of statues of religious figures, such as Mary, Jesus, or other saints. Many Christians, unknowingly, place these statues in their homes with the intention of expressing devotion, but it is crucial to understand that God never asked us to worship or revere carved images, even those that supposedly represent biblical figures. By bowing before an image or placing faith in material objects, we are straying from the true spirit of worship to God. God desires a direct and personal relationship with us. He invites us to worship Him in spirit and in truth, John 4 verse 24, not through images or idols. When we worship or revere statues, we risk replacing true worship with an empty, ritualistic form of faith that in reality distances the presence of God from our lives. Worshiping statues or trusting in them for protection or blessings is not God's plan for us. The biblical history clearly shows how much God abhors idolatry. A clear example is the episode of the Israelites in the wilderness, right after being delivered from Egypt. Despite witnessing God's great miracles, they quickly turned away and built a golden calf, falling into idolatry. This provoked God's wrath and brought serious consequences to the people of Israel. The same principle applies today. When we place other gods, symbols, or images in our lives, we attract God's wrath and turn away from His blessings. However, God is merciful and always calls His people to repentance. Joel 2 verse 13 reminds us, Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for He is merciful and compassionate, 
slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. What should you do if you have these objects in your home? First, recognize that they have no real power and that their presence may be hindering the flow of God's blessings in your life. Then, get rid of these images and symbols. Ask God to purify your heart and your home from all forms of idolatry and restore true worship centered on Him. Trusting in God alone is the way to true security and peace. As he says in Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Make your home a place where the glory of God is manifested and not a space where carved images, no matter how beautiful they may seem, take the place of true worship to the one true God. 5. Demonic Music and Movies Music and entertainment are powerful tools that the devil has long used to project darkness and influence the minds and hearts of people. Music and films that glorify evil, witchcraft, drug abuse, Satanism, or promote anti-Christian values act as open doors to demonic influences. What often seems like just entertainment is actually a spiritual weapon that can penetrate deeply into the souls of individuals corrupting the purity and holiness that God desires for his children. The power of music and cinema lies in their ability to stir emotions, influence thoughts, and shape behaviors. The devil uses these art forms to subtly implant ideas and values that are completely contrary to God's principles. Movies like The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby are clear examples of entertainment that glorifies the occult and demonic activity, presenting these practices as mysterious, fascinating, or even desirable. Although they may be classified as horror or fiction, they have a real impact on people's minds, planting seeds of fear, curiosity about the occult, and desensitizing audiences to evil. The same goes for certain songs that exalt sin, hedonism, and rebellion against God. Songs like Highway to Hell and others that promote Satanism, Drug abuse and immoral behaviors may seem like just music, but they are filled with dangerous spiritual messages. Music has a unique ability to deeply penetrate the soul and create emotional and spiritual connections, whether through melody, rhythm, or lyrics. When these connections are made with dark themes, the listener can unconsciously open the door to demonic influences in their life. The Bible clearly warns us about the kind of content we should avoid. In Psalm 101 verse 3, we read, I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. This means we must be diligent in protecting our hearts and minds from any content that is contrary to God's will. When we allow demonic content to enter our lives, whether through movies or music, we are giving the enemy an opportunity to influence our thoughts, emotions, and even our behavior. Many people do not realize the spiritual impact of consuming demonic or anti-Christian content. It can bring thoughts of fear, anxiety, impurity, and ultimately, distance a person from God. Entertainment that promotes witchcraft, occultism, and other behaviors contrary to the Word of God can also open spiritual doors to oppression and demonic influence, creating an atmosphere where the enemy can act in our lives. Many popular movies and songs contain occult symbols and direct references to Satanism, whether in the form of lyrics or subliminal images, and this is not by chance. The devil works in areas where people least expect it, using entertainment to normalize evil and present sin as something fun, exciting, or harmless. When a person consumes these materials, their mind and heart are exposed to a constant diet of rebellion against God, moral corruption, and disrespect for Christian principles. What begins as something fun or exciting can turn into a spiritual battle. Many people report that after watching horror films or listening to music that glorifies evil, they began to have nightmares, oppressive thoughts, and even feel a heavy spiritual atmosphere in their homes. These are signs that the enemy is using these channels to affect the spiritual life of those who consume such content. The Word of God calls us to be holy, set apart from the world and its corruptions. Philippians 4 verse 8 exhorts us to focus on everything that is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. This includes the choices we make about what we listen to and watch. By carefully selecting the content we allow into our lives, 
We protect our hearts and minds from evil influences. If you have films or music that glorify evil, it is time to remove them from your life and home. God desires for us to live in peace, purity, and holiness. And to do that, we need to eliminate anything that is blocking His flow in our lives. By doing so, you not only protect your soul, but also create a spiritually healthy environment in your home where the Spirit of God can dwell and bring peace, joy, and protection. Replace these destructive contents with music and films that glorify God and fill your life with His truth and love. There are countless Christian movies and songs that exalt the name of God and build up the faith. By consuming these materials, you not only fill your mind with good things, but you also create an environment where the Holy Spirit is welcome. As Colossians 3 verse 16 instructs us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. The entertainment we choose matters, and God desires that we use our choices to glorify His name and protect our souls from evil. Remove demonic films and music, and experience the peace and freedom that come from living a life dedicated to what is pure and holy. As we come to the end of this important discussion, it's clear that the things we allow into our homes can have a significant spiritual impact, whether through objects, books, or entertainment, we must remain vigilant about what we permit in our personal spaces. Removing these demonic influences not only protects us from spiritual harm, but also invites God's presence, allowing our homes to be places of peace, love, and divine protection. Taking these steps of faith shows our commitment to walking in the light of God's truth, fully trusting in Him for our safety, blessings, and well-being. As we eliminate these hidden dangers, we create an atmosphere where God's Spirit can dwell freely, bringing peace, joy, and favor to our lives. If this video has helped you, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel for more content that supports your spiritual journey. Give this video a like, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to share it with friends and family so that together we can spread the message of spiritual vigilance and protection. Thank you for watching, and may God continue to guide and bless your home.